Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. Welcome to Floating in Dreams. This is my makeup decluttering series for 2022. So let's get started. Welcome if you're new here. Welcome if you're a returning visitor. Thank you so very much for joining me today. Yes, we are doing my annual makeup decluttering series. I like doing this once a year as a bit of spring cleaning because my drawers just tend to overflow after a year of trying and using makeup and I just need to get organized. If you don't know who I am, my name is Maika. Welcome. I'm from the Netherlands and I love to try eyeshadow palettes. I love trying out Essence and Catrice products, but I also love Love going back to old favorites and really getting the use out of my products use them up from time to time like I really do like to not only have so many things that I can no longer get the use out of it so that's where these declutters sort of fit into my channel and how I go about things now I will be reusing this exact intro for all of these videos that I'm doing I'm doing five in total but these videos always also need a bit of a disclaimer so bear with me as I go through these step one no, I will not be sending you any of my makeup. A lot of the things I'm getting rid of are quite old and I would not feel good passing this on to anyone I don't know. So it's gonna go to friends or family and that's pretty much it. Step number two, I am not a YouTuber or blogger who receives a lot of PR. I'm not, like I am on PR lists, but I don't just don't request that many things because I would like to be in control of what's coming in out uh, into my collection really. Um, but I have been doing this for a long time, which is why I have a larger collection. Um, but this is not going to be one of those cutthroat um, declutters where we get rid of like half the collection. This is not it, if that's what you're looking for. And the third step that I need to mention is the fact that I will not be swatching a whole lot of products here. I actually did collection videos leading up to this decluttering series where I did do all of those swatches. And also if you use the search bar on this channel or on my blog, you can find reviews where I have swatches and looks up with a lot of these products because I tend to review everything I try and I really use my blog as this like giant catalog that I can refer people to if they have questions on like multiple looks with eyeshadow palettes or anything like that, then you can just check that out. And very often I will also have um, like mentioned products or shown them in videos as well. So you can always also check out the channel if you would like to see more. So without further ado, let's get started. So welcome to declutter number one. This is going to be base products, which means it's all the products that I use to create a base. So powders, foundations, concealers, we've got some primers in the back here, and I've got some setting sprays as well. So everything to sort of start up and round out the makeup look. Um, and we're just going to get started because as you can see, we've got a lot going on. So I thought we could start with the powders right here at the front that I laid out for you. And I'm surprised at how many powders I have. <laughs> I really didn't realize that this is what happened. And I think some of this is still the effect of me trying out a lot of products for full face reviews. Um, that's why I definitely ended up with some powders that I didn't necessarily need. So let me just talk favorites first. So the Essence Sensitive uh, Skin Loving Sensitive Mineral Powder, I have said uh, that this is quite similar to the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Fla Flawless fi Finish. Um, I don't have that anymore because I did use it up. And this is also on its last legs, but I'm not sure if this is still available. As you can see, I've hit Major Pan, but this is one of my favorites and I have three backups of this because I love it that much. And then over here, we are going to be um, talking about some Catrice things as well. The one I'm going to keep is the one that's at the top. This is the one that's newest to me. This is their All Matte Plus Shine Control Powder. Uh, long lasting and this is their banana shade. And I just feel that this shade looks better on me than this one does. This is the same powder, uh, but this is Neutral Fresh Beige. And you can just see that this is quite a dark powder. Um, even though I did hit pan on it, but I feel that now that they've come out with this lighter shade that this is going to work better for me And then the essence one can be my skin tone powder and then this one is going to be the more Like translucent powder because to me that banana shade isn't all that yellow So for me, it's actually pretty good But that means I can get rid of that and because I like this all matte powder now that they're doing I'm going to disc uh, I'm going to declutter the prime and fine mattifying powder. This used to be my favorite Catrice powder, but ever since it was reformulated, I don't like it as much, so I did keep an old one around, 
but I feel like the new powder is a bit more updated and I prefer the Essence over this, the Catrice ones for sure. Um, so I don't need this anymore. So those two can be decluttered. A suspected favorite is the Kiko Milano, what's this called again, uh, Radiant Fusion Bake Powder. Uh, I have compared this, or at least I, I think this is very comparable to the uh, Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powders, if you're familiar with that. This is very similar to the Diffused Light, but at a fraction of the price. And I really enjoy this powder. I just, I still have to put it in a shop my stash. I'm waiting for the Essence one to run out so I can finally start using it on a day-to-day -day basis. So that's a keep. And a, another very glowy powder is the Etude House Secret Beam Powder in Light Pearl Beige. That's what this is called. I got this off of Yes Style. I'm not sure if I can open this. Ooh. And this was also very pretty. So I did really like this too. It's very glowy though. It even, I'm not sure if you can see, but it has a bit of actual phys, like visible sparkle, which I'm not a huge fan of. But yeah, this is a, this is a really nice one. And I do want to get more use out of that too. And one of my higher end uh, powders that I've always loved is the Too Faced Pressed Primed and Poreless. Uh, so I did repurchase that, but I haven't really used it since because I wasn't going through powders all that quickly in the past year or so. This is definitely one that I do want to keep, use it up. But I'm going to get rid of the True Match uh, Super Blendable Perfecting Powder by L'Oreal. I thought that I could keep this around as a bit of a powder foundation moment, but I've got really dry skin, so powder foundation really isn't my jam, so why did I keep this last time? I don't know. The Milani Prep Set and Glow Powder didn't really work for me, unfortunately. This is the illuminating version that I got, and this made my makeup look very cakey, so this wasn't great with my skin, so that's why this is on DVD. This is going to be decluttered. And then this Laura Geller Powder I'm always a bit on the fence about, so this is going to go in the maybe for now. Now, if I use a powder foundation, as in I use mainly powder as my base, I always go for the MAC Mineralize Skin Finish Natural in light. No, medium, actually. So this is a bit darker. Um, but this is actually great in the summertime if I just want to wear some concealer and I don't want to wear a full face of makeup. I love using this, so this is going to stay. And then we have the H&M powder, and I actually hit pen on this in the past, and I repurchased it for a full face of H&M. But I know I will never be going back to this powder again, so that's why this one can also go. Um, so then we have some loose powders here and a mini of the Hourglass Diffused Light Ambient Lighting Powder. Because what I want to do is when I use that Kiko powder in a shop my stash, I want to be able to compare it to this. And I no longer have this, so I bought a mini just so I can try it. Plus, this is actually also a really, really good travel size, so I'm going to keep this for travel for sure. Speaking of travel sizes, I have the HD Finishing Powder from NYX in the Banana Shade as a mini. This used to be my travel powder, but now I have the Hourglass one. I no longer need this, so this is going to be decluttered. And this, you may think, oh, that's another Hourglass powder. This is the packaging for their Veil Mineral Powder, but I actually really like the size of this compact, and it's quite easy to get the sifter out. So the idea was that I was going to reuse this for depotting some of these loose powders. I definitely got rid of a lot of loose powders last year, uh, and I really only bought one more, and I like all three of these, so these are all going to stay. However, this Too Faced Born This Way packaging is just a faff to use because the sifter has a stopper, and that makes it really difficult to get the powder out. So that's why I thought I could start repotting it into this so I can get more use out of this for sure, because this is far easier to put in my everyday makeup drawer, and then I can actually start using this powder up as well, because that's another aim. And then the Laura Geller. The reason why I've kept it is this is actually a highlighter. Uh, this is French Vanilla, and this is Portofino, and especially French Vanilla is a great under-eye setting powder. I've said it many times before. I just don't really use designated under-eye setting powders, so... Maybe it's just time for this to go because I've had it for quite some time and I never reach for it. So in terms of powders, we started off with 17. I'm keeping 10 and I'm getting a rid of 7, which I think is a good number. Um, and some of those I know I will use up because I do use up like 3 or 4 powders a year usually. Last year I think it was only 2, but I can use up quite a few powders a year if I want to. So I know that 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 pile is going to dwindle down because the S's one is essentially already used up. I'm currently working on that in my shop, my stash. So seven out of 10, I think is a good number. And 
then, then we're moving on to primers. I have my sort of like primer primers and then glowy primers over here with one stray one over there because it didn't fit anymore on this side. Uh, and it's definitely, I, I, I'm seeing a couple of things that I know I will be able to get rid of. For instance, this Milk Makeup Watermelon Stick. It worked okay as a primer, but these kind of stick-like products, they don't really do enough for my dry skin. So this I'm going to get rid of. I will be keeping the Prime and Fine Fresh It Up from Catrice, but I will be using it up uh, because this is one of my favorite all-time primers, but it's getting a bit old. I only opened it the other day to be able to compare it to the Hydrator Plump and, Plump and Fresh, which is, which is their newest one. They aren't the same. This is more of a gel texture. This is far more moisturizing, I find. Uh, much more watery, so I do still prefer this over this, but this I still have to try out more because I just came out with it. And as you can see, I have a lot of Essence and Catrice primers, but I also tend to go through them quite quickly. So those two I want to keep. Um, the Vitamin C Fresh Glow Primer actually surprised me quite a bit. I already put this on my face just to see what it would do. Um, and it does have a very strong citrusy kind of scent, which I'm not a fan of, but like I said, I use these up quite regularly, and this was actually really pretty on the skin, so I do want to keep that. Uh, this one is essentially gone. This is currently in my Shop My Stash to be used up. This is the Hello Good Stuff Primer Serum from Essence, so this I'm going to keep. And then these are also two newer things from Essence, uh, but I'm going to keep the newest one, the Hello Good Stuff Glow Serum Primer. I think I want to be able to use that up too, uh, but this face oil, it's really, really nice, but maybe, should I put this in my skincare perhaps? But I've got plenty of face oils in my skincare as well. So this has become a bit superfluous and I didn't manage to get around to using this more before they already released new products. So that's why this is gonna go. And this I'm a bit torn about because I really like the Too Faced Hangover RX, but I haven't thought of this primer in a while. And I actually bought a full face of this after using up a mini. That's how much I liked it. If I like a product like this and I use it up, I, I'll repurchase it. Um, but this, I think I'm going to leave it as a maybe. Because my favorite primer by now is the Milk Hydro Grip. I used up several minis of this. A, a full, like, a, a travel size plus some samples. So I know I love this. This, this is the full size that I repurchased because I love those other products so much. And this is definitely going to stay because this is my favorite. But over here, we still have a couple of things that aren't too glowy. And we have the Fenty Beauty Primer. I think this is their, yeah, Pro Filter Soft Silk Hydrating Primer. This really didn't do enough for me. I did use, I bought, bought this for my full face makeup look, but this wasn't great for me. So that's why this is going to be decluttered. And I will also be decluttering the Revol Hearts Me So Cozy Cold Cream Primer. This actually wet, felt really, really great on my skin, especially in the winter time. It's a really nice, rich moisturizer primer, but I have so many primers that especially Essence and Catrice keep coming out with, and I prefer those over this, so that's why this I'm going to declutter. Mm, and that does mean that I actually now have space for this guy in my little, in my little organizer. Like, I can have these guys in here like that. So that's good. So then we have some backups for primers. Um, and then over here we have the glowy things. And I know exactly what I want to get rid of. I want to get rid of the e.l.f. Beauty Shield because this is um, a product I've completely forgotten I even owned. Uh, I didn't remember this actually, so that's why this definitely has to go. And then the Glossier Future Dew. This is one of my favorite glowy primers, so that's definitely going to stay as is my Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter. Unfortunately, the lettering is rubbing off. Um, this is in the shade too, uh, too light, so this is a good one for me as well. I really like that. And then I'm going to be keeping my MAC and my Milani primers. I actually have a full size of the Strobe Light as well. These are really lovely. I feel they're very similar though, so these are good dupes. And finally, the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Illuminating Primer I'm going to get rid of. This is far too disco ball for my makeup taste, so that's that, that's why this is going to go. So out of my primers, I'm keeping 11 with one nearly used up, and I'm getting rid of six. All right, so then before we move on to concealer and like foundations, which I think is a bit more fun, these are my setting sprays. With setting sprays, I tend to use them up and then move on to a new one, uh, like with powders and primers, actually. So that's why I don't have that many here. Um, my MAC Fix Plus, I use to wet brushes. This is always in my everyday makeup drawer. And the Pretty Fresh um, Hyaluronic Setting Mist 
is the one that's currently in my shop my stash i've already used quite a bit of it as you can see this has been really lovely i actually really enjoy it so this may be worth a repurchase who knows um so yeah those are in my shop my stash so those are staying the I Heart Revolution Fixing Spray in Green Tea. I've gone through several of these. This is one of my all-time favorite setting sprays, so this is not going to go anywhere. And if I want my makeup to really, really last, I use the Urban Decay, which I have too many sizes of. So this is like a gift with purchase, and this was a travel size that I purchased. I never bought the full size of the All Nighter because I feel they last you quite a long time. So that's why those two are going to stay. I also have the Milk Hydro Grip Setting Spray, which... I haven't used that much, so this should be the next setting spray I think I use up once I've gone through the ColourPop. So this is definitely one that I still want to use more. And then I have two Catrice ones left. Um, the, Bang Bra no, the Bang Boom Brow setting spray is new to their collection. And I always like trying these mini, like, small um, Catrice ones. And they really you can use these up really really quickly too um, because it's only 50 mils so I always like to keep these around and then I spotted this I didn't know that this even existed I need to shake this up so I can show you um, but this is the prime and fine dewy glow fixing spray and as you can see we've got quite a lot of sparkle running through this and that's why I'm not sure about this I've used it several times and I quite liked it but I think this actually add sparkle to the face so this may just have to go as i said i use up setting spray and then i move on to the next thing so i've got one two three four five six seven left and i'm decluttering one because i just don't see myself using this again i would much rather repurchase the classic prime and fine setting spray from catrice which comes in the half size bottle i think that will work for me much better all right so i think we've got everything in frame here so these are all of the concealers that are in my collection Currently, these two are in my shop, my stash. The Stay Natural is almost gone. And the Perfect Max Match for L'Oreal I put in here because I was afraid it was going to be expiring. But actually, I opened it up the other day. And this smells like paint thinner by now, which is not the scent it used to have. So this has actually already expired. So this has to go. The Kiko Vegan Concealer they did as part of their Precious Rituals collection was actually really, really pretty, so I definitely want to get more use out of this, so this is going to stay. And I feel quite similarly about the new Nabla Concealer. I bought this on sale from Beauty Bay during the uh, Black Friday sales. I'm not even sure what this concealer is called anymore. It doesn't say. It's uh, Oh, it's the Regeneration Uplifting Creamy Concealer. It, I've already used it, so it looks a bit gross. It has one of those sponge tip applicators in a teardrop shape um, to allow you to apply the product. And I like this far better, <laughs> so that's going to stay, than their uh, close-up concealer. This is far, far too heavy for me. This is Tarte Shape Tape kind of coverage level, which is not my preference. Um, but I have kept this around in the past for when I want to do cut creases. And that's what I'm going to keep this around for until it expires, until it starts to smell funky. I don't do cut creases all that often, but whenever I have a bit more time on my hands and I want to have a good play with makeup, I like to go for something like this. So this is going to stay. Then the H&M uh, Cover Up Concealer, uh, I, I actually was quite impressed with when I tried it in my full face of H&M makeup. This is another one of those products that I bought particularly for a full face review of H&M makeup. But I was pretty impressed with it, so I'm going to keep this around. Oh, and by the way, concealer is another one of those products where I like to first use up one before I move on to a new thing. Um, but a lot of these have been opened. This, I know, isn't open because this is a repurchased NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. And this was one of my favorite concealers a few years ago. But I actually have one that's... Is this open? I don't know whether this has been opened. But I got this when I bought this. When I bought the full size, they gave me a travel size for free. So maybe just keep the travel size and not the full size. It's in the shade Vanilla, by the way, both of them. Um, because this isn't my favorite concealer anymore, and I don't think I'll be reaching for it. So I'm going to get rid of the full size. I'm going to keep the travel size. The MAC uh, Studio Fix 24-Hour Smoothwear Concealer. This is another one of those products I bought for a full face of MAC. I hadn't tried a MAC concealer in years. And I decided to go with this, and it's actually a pretty good shade match for me. It's NW15. Um, and I really liked it. It was really rich and creamy, so this is definitely one I want to go back to. And 
potentially use it up. The Maybelline, um, who remembers this, the Fit Me Concealer, uh, again, something that's unopened because I bought this because I really like the first one that I used up completely. Um, and I remember really liking the shade and I really like the texture of this. But is this something that I need to keep around? I don't think so because I have so many other concealers that are open that I would use up before this. Um, we have the Milk Makeup Flex Concealer. And this was also really lovely. This is also quite new to me. It has been opened and I definitely want to try this more. So that's going to stay. The Moist Creamy Concealer from Apieu. This is a K-Beauty brand and I really like this. So this is definitely one that I want to use up. I remember this is one of the concealers that's actually on my... Once I use up the Stay Natural, this is the next concealer I'm going to use up Bile. And this is definitely one of them. And then we have the same, the uh, Tip Concealer. This is another K-Beauty brand. And when I bought this, this was the lightest shade available, and it's sadly too dark for me, so this is going to go. And the same goes for this Catrice Concealer. This is their Clean ID High Cover Concealer. Uh, this was released part of a limited edition Clean ID capsule collection they did in the spring of last year. Um, I'm not sure which shade this is anymore. The sticker is gone. Um, but this was the lightest shade available, and it's too dark, so it's going to go. The Milani Conceal and Perfect Longwear Concealer is far too heavy for me. I don't need too many heavy concealers. So that's why this one in 110 Nude Ivory is going to go. Now of these two, the Stay Naked from Urban Decay, I don't think I need to keep this around. It's in 20NN. It's been opened. I liked it better than the foundation actually. The foundation was not great for my dry skin. This I liked enough, but I still have an unopened Naked Skin Concealer. And I would rather open this and use this up before this, because this was discontinued a long, long time ago. But I snatched one up and didn't use it. This is unopened. It's completely sealed. Um, and that's why I do want to make sure I get more use out of that. And then we have the Dior uh, Forever Skin Correct um, uh, Concealer. I have this in the shade 1N, and I actually think I need 0N, because this is a little bit too dark for me, but this is the lightest shade that is available in the Netherlands. So that was the only shade I could really buy very easily, so I bought this for a full face of Dior. And I do really like the concealer, and I feel I can get away with it. It's not dark like the other ones, where it's like straight up orange. This is only like a hair too dark, and especially in the summertime, if I want to use that MAC powder just to set my face, it's good to have a not too dark, uh, not too light concealer around because this matches my skin tone pretty well actually. So I've just moved up this a little bit so that we can see what we've got going on here. So these are mainly things that don't have a doe foot but that have a slightly different uh, way of applying the concealer, save for things that I've repurchased because I like them so much. Because actually my favorite all-time concealer, till this day, is the Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define Concealer in C3. I was able to buy this for like two euros in a sale over the winter season and I was like, okay, I just want to make sure I have this in my collection. This is the third or fourth one that I've owned. Like this is a concealer I really go back to all the time. And I really, really enjoy the Stay All Day Concealer from Essence as well. This sadly only comes in two shades, and hold your horses, this is the darkest one. <laughs> um, and it's perfect for me. Um, this is a really, really good light coverage, really lightweight, perfect concealer for what I like. I just wish they did this in many, many more shades, though. The Ordinary Concealer, I really haven't had a chance to try much. I know Kelly Gooch was hoping she'd love it but didn't like it because it looked very cakey on her. Um, I've only used it once or twice, so I don't know. So this is something I need to try more. So these are the Peri Para Ink Concealers, um, in Ink Corrector and Concealer. So this is the Peach Corrector, and this is their concealer. And these are so, so lovely. Um, I can't find these on Yes Style anymore though, so I'm not sure if these are still available, but these are some of my favorites, so these are definitely going to stay. And then we have the One Drop Coverage Concealer from Catrice. This is going to stay. This was discontinued. Uh, you can no longer buy this. This is again unopened, but it's my favorite Catrice concealer for sure, so that's why it's, it gets to stay. Um, the Rimmel Match Perfection is something I don't really feel that strongly about anymore. This is another one of those, I use it up, really liked it, repurchase it kind of moments. But by now I feel like I have other things that I perhaps like even better than this. So I don't need to keep this around. 
And then we have the Fenty Beauty, uh, what's this called again? Bright Fix Eye Brightener. And it's in the sh shade sea sh Seashell, which is a little bit too pink for me perhaps, but it's really, really nice as an eye brightener for sure. So that's why this I do want to keep around. It's not really a concealer for me, but if I want to go for the, those no makeup makeup kind of days, then this is a very, very pretty product. And then I just have my potted concealers and correctors left. Now the Catrice Ultimate Camouflage Cream Concealer is one that I don't love, um, but I did use it in a recent video, but I don't want to get rid of it just yet because I actually, at some point in the next couple of months, want to come on here and do a full face of potential dupes. And I'm sort of testing out this against the Soft Matte Creamy Concealer from NARS, which, as you can see, is one of my favorites because it has a huge dent. I haven't gone back to this in a while, though, so it's going to be a good experiment for me to see how similar these are. So these are going to stay for another round. And then I have my Charlotte Tilbury Corrector, um, which is really lovely. Actually, it works really well on me. Uh, it's in the lightest shade, fair. And then the Glossier in G12. This is their stretch concealer. I really like this over the Peri Para Peach Corrector that I have. It's really, really stunning. Um, so yeah, these are all going to stay. I don't reach for these a lot, but especially the Glossier, I really had a moment with that, and this is definitely one I would like to use up at some point. So we're not getting rid of a lot because I have been pretty good at using up concealers actually. So I'm getting rid of eight and this is everything that we're keeping, but it now fits again in these little cubbies. Yay. But are you ready <laughs> for the main event? I love trying foundation. What can I tell you? I just really, really do. Um, by the time this video goes up, I will have just done a roundup of 10 foundations that I tried. Um, I have a lot of reviews up with these as well up on the blog, so we've got a lot of chat about. There's definitely, you know, there's st stuff that needs to go. I'm very well aware um, because I definitely sometimes keep things around for videos or anything like that. So, but not everything here works. Not all the shades are perfect. Um, and I definitely like my more expensive set foundation. So let me lay out the drugstore ones first and then we'll do high end. Welcome to the drugstore foundations. And as you can see, I've gathered quite a few again. <laughs> there are some here that I really, really like. A lot of them are also not that great for me. And I actually have one here that's expired, which is the Pretty Fresh Foundation from ColourPop. It looks okay like this, right? But then when I turn it over, I'm not sure if you can see, but that yellow stuff is on the inside of the packaging. So I don't really feel safe using this anymore. But I like this so much, I actually put it in my favorites of 2020, that I did buy myself a backup of this because I did like it that much. But this is going to go. Something that was sadly too dark for me and also too matte and not perfect was the Catrice Clean ID uh, High Cover uh, Luminous Matte Foundation. So this came with that concealer I just con uh, decluttered. Wasn't great, so I can get rid of that. Now this, I'm going to move it out of my collection, but I'm going to put it in a Makeup Memories box. I hardly ever put base makeup in my makeup memories box. Like, only a handful of products get to go there, mainly colorful things that have really pretty packaging or have sentimental value to me. But this, I want Catrice to come out with again. <laughs> so unless, like, I want to keep this around so I can always compare the formula to other things that they're doing. Because the HD Liquid Radiance Foundation is my perfect Catrice foundation. But this was discontinued like what? Three years ago and it wasn't even available everywhere. So why is this still in my collection? I haven't used it since because they keep coming out with new things and then I try those and this is the thing I always use to go like, okay, how similar is it really? Something that really surprised me and that I definitely need to try more of is the Perfect, Hi perfect Hydrating Foundation from H&M. This is in 2N Light Sand, and I've only really used it for my full face of H&M and like once or twice after that just to try it out, but I haven't really put this through the ringer of like using it for a week straight, which is what I like to do when I try out a foundation. So I definitely still need to write a review on this, and it's good enough that I want to write that review, um, and I'm definitely going to put it in a Shop My Stash sometime later this year, so this is going to stay. Then we have the Clean uh, ID Hyper Hydro Skin Tint from Catrice. This is brand new. This just came out. 
and I already reviewed it because it was not that great. So I'll make sure to link you to, the uh, to my review in the description box down below if you want to know what this looked like. This is a product that does not play well with other makeup products. It just doesn't. I'm also going to be getting rid of the Clean ID Hydro BB Cream. This is a really nice BB cream. But I have other BB creams that I simply like better. And if I want to go for something this lightweight, the ColourPop Pretty Fresh is definitely going to be one of my preferences over this. So that's why this BB cream can go. I think it was discontinued as well. The Born to Glow from NYX is brand new to me. This is one that I would like to put in a review at some point in a Shop My Sash later this year to try it out a bit more. I bought this in porcelain. The Nabla Skin Tint um, is one that I do want to keep around. It is a little bit too dark for me, but because it is a skin tint and it is a very lightweight texture, I do really like it. And of the skin tints that I tried in 2021, this was possibly my favorite. So that's why this gets to stay. But this, sadly, is too dark for me. The Milani Glow Hydrating Skin Tint. Really lovely texture, really lovely coverage. It has a lot of things going for it, but it's about five shades too dark for me, even though this is the lightest shade available. So we're gonna declutter this one. The Kiko Insta Moisture Foundation. I think I'm just going to soldier on with this one. I only just recently reviewed this and tried it out for the first time. I have this in 1R, and what I didn't know when I started using it is that this pump actually has like a lock on it so I was pressing it down and pressing it down and nothing would come out and I actually kind of wrecked the pump a little bit so it doesn't pump as greatly as it used to do um, but yeah that's my fault and not the packaging or the foundations but the foundation itself is lovely so I want to keep the uh, the um, Insta Moisture from Kiko around. The Hydro Hero from Essence I think it's good to have a Essence foundation around but I'm not sure it has to be this because we still have a couple of other things down here. Um, this is also brand new from them. This is one of their newest launches. And I'm not sure yet whether I will have it up by the time you're watching this. But I may have already reviewed this for you. This is far more successful for me than the Catrice one. But it is. I'm going to sound like a broken record. But it's going to. It's, it's two shades too dark for me. And it's the lightest shade available. So this is in 05 Natural Ivory. So this I'm going to get rid of. Then the e.l.f. Camo CC Cream. I'm not sure if I still want to try this. I haven't heard great reviews. A lot of people say it's very drying. But I spotted this in store and I was like, hey, I haven't tried an e.l.f. product in such a long time. And I do like e.l.f. as a brand. So I want to try this. But I haven't even really put this on my face yet. So this has to stay around. Maybe we can review that. Um, the Kiko Precious Rituals uh, Foundation was very much like the H&M, a bit of a surprise to me. But mainly because this was described as a velvet matte foundation. And it turns out it is actually quite a lightweight hydrating foundation, perfect for what I love. So that's going to stay. And this again saddens me, and this is why I said I'm going to sound like a broken record, because the Rival Hyaluron makeup is like 10 shades too dark for me. And this is in the lightest shade, porcelain. It is exactly the kind of foundation I love. Very lightweight, dewy texture. Sad, sad day. Now, the Catrice foundation I'm going to keep around in my makeup collection is the True Skin. Um, I bought it eventually in a different shade, which was darker than what I initially went for. This is in 010 Cool Cashmere. And this is my perfect shade. And now I've got a good shade match in this foundation. It works for me a lot better. So that's why I do want to keep this. I cannot get rid of my L'Oreal Infallible Fresh Wear. This is one of my favorite drugstore foundations, so it's going to stay. The Essence, however, the Fresh and Fit, this is their updated version. They already released an, a Fresh and Fit foundation years ago, so I didn't really understand why they came out with this. Um, this is, again, lightest shade, fresh porcelain. Um, shade was okay, but I wasn't really a fan of the texture of this one. The True Match. Oh. An OG, I've used this a lot as you can see, but the L'Oreal True Match has definitely run its course in my collection. Um, I haven't reached for this. I don't think about owning this even, even though the shade 1N, really good shade match for me, but this is just a bit old and forgotten in my collection. What is not old and forgotten though is the Zoeva Authentic Skin Foundation in the shade Ambition. This, I love. 
So this is definitely going to stay. This is a foundation I definitely want to use up at some point. Milani Pro Conceal and Perfect, far too full coverage for my liking, so it's going to go. The shade, however, was a match, 00A Porcelain. And then I think this is going to be my Essence foundation of choice that I keep around. The Pretty Natural Hydrating Foundation was actually a great surprise to me. I hadn't tried an Essence foundation that was this good in a long, long time. In fact, I don't think this is maybe actually have been the first foundation by Essence that I truly liked. Uh, 020 Neutral Alabaster isn't even the lightest shade they do, and it's a really good match for me too. So those are going to stay. The Ordinary uh, Serum Foundation in 1.1N. Uh, if you've been with me for a while, you knew this was in my shop, my stash for a few months towards the end of 2021 because I wanted to try use it up. I'm about two thirds of the way done with this. So I know that sometime this year, I'm definitely going to use it up, but this is more of like a fall into winter kind of foundation for me. I really found that when I hit winter and my skin got a bit drier, this didn't look as nice on me anymore. So that's why this is gonna have to stay around for the end of the year when I can go back to this. And then we have the Flower Beauty Light Illusion Foundation. This is going to be the only drugstore foundation that is too dark for me that I'm going to keep around because I like the formula that much. I know there is a lighter shade. This is uh, L1 Porcelain. There should be a shade on the market called Shell, but it's not for sale where I live and I cannot order Flower Beauty online. So that's a bit of a bummer. However, sometime this year, I hope to travel to the UK where they sell Flower Beauty, and if I can then find it in a super drug, I should be able to pick up the lighter shade. But for now, I'm going to keep this around because it is okay enough for me in the summertime. And I actually have a foundation that is more high-end, that is too light for me, that I think is a perfect mixing shade for this. Alrighty, so these are all of my high-end foundations. As you can see, I have many more, and most of these are actually really good for me, or they are new to me, and I still want to try them. Um, I think actually I bought more drugstore foundations to try out than I did high-end stuff. That's interesting. Um, so there are a few things though that I think I can get rid of just because I have so much. Not because I don't like the products. A foundation that I do want to keep but that I want to try use up this year is the Tarte Rainforest of the Sea Foundation. This has actually been discontinued for quite some time. This is Fair Beige. Every single time I wear this I get great compliments but it's getting a little bit old, so I need to use this up before it expires. I think I'm about a third of the way done, and it's a very liquidy, like, lightweight foundation. So I'm pretty sure that I can make this work. And, like, the, like later this spring, I think I'm going to put this in a shop my stash around, like, April or May time, and then just use it until it's done. Um, the MAC Waterweight Foundation, this is one that I've repurchased after using it up in the past. I was going to do a full face of MAC and didn't have one of their foundations. So I repurchased the one that I love the most, and it's this one. I know I'll be able to use this up at some point. Estee Lauder Double Wear Nude Water Fresh Makeup. Oh, this is such a good foundation, but it's been discontinued. This is in the shade Porcelain, um, and this is actually really, really lovely. It's a really good shade match for me, and this is the kind of texture I like. And because it was discontinued, I don't want to get rid of this. My favorite foundation for travel because it's long lasting and you cannot break the bottle and it's got a very easy to use dispense, uh, like way to dispense the product because it's just like a little, um, a little squeezy tube. It's the Dior Backstage Foundation. This is in a shade 0N. Great shade match, great wearability. Like this is everything I need for a long wear foundation for sure. And then we have the Fenty Beauty uh, Skin Ease Drop Skin Tint. That's what this is called. I have it in the shade one, which is sadly a little bit too light. So this is the foundation I was referencing as great for using with the Flower Beauty to lighten it. So that's what I'm going to keep this around for. Estee Lauder Futurist Hydra Rescue. I just finished uh, finished using this, and I was really impressed with it. So this is going to stay. New to me in my makeup collection is the, uh, the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation. I haven't put this on my face yet, so I can't tell you anything about it. The Giorgio Armani Neo Nude is my one of my favorite lightweight foundations, so this is not going to go. It's in shade 1.5. It Cosmetic CC Cream, a repurchase after using one of these up completely, so you know this is not going to go anywhere. Another great Dior foundation, the Forever Natural Nude. I just finished testing this out. Another great long wearing foundation. This even lasted a workout class, like it was that good, even though it's very lightweight, but it looks very skin like too. Nothing too dewy, nothing too matte. A really good everyday foundation. And this guy, the Clinique Everbetter Glow Foundation. 
I reviewed this, bought this a few years ago because I really wanted to try a Clinique foundation. This is in CN28 Ivory. It looks a bit dark. <laughs> so I think I'm actually going to declutter this. I don't think I'll get around to using this up and it is getting a little old. One of my favorite lightweight foundations is the Le Beige Skin Tint from uh, Chanel. This is really lovely. I have this in the shade light. I wear this a lot in the summertime. Another foundation I tried not too long ago, I think towards the end of 2021, and I was very, very impressed with it, the Light Wonder from Charlotte Tilbury. Um, that beautiful skin foundation has a very, very, has very big competition in this one, I can tell you that. And I think the best foundation I have tried in recent years is the Luminous Silk from Giorgio Armani. I never tried this before, and I decided to break the... Uh, I decided to bite the bullet and try it out. Shade number three, perfect shade match, really lovely texture. I absolutely adore this. But the NARS, I'm, am I really going to do this? I'm going to do this. This was already in the on the chopping block last year. I tried it out right before I did declutters to see if I actually liked it. And I like it. It's a good foundation. It's just that I look at everything else I have and I don't feel this really goes with what I want from a makeup product. I have this in the shade uh, Mont Blanc and it's their classic sheer glow. My YSL All Hours and Touche Claw, these are not going anywhere. Great for every day, great for long wearing. So actually if I have just these two, I could get rid of everything else, I, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, I do really like my YSL foundation, so these are not gonna go. Something I wanna use up, the Hourglass Vanish Stick foundation for sure. Um, this is another one where I feel like it's just, this is still good enough to you know give it another round, but I do wanna use it up by the end of the year. Urban Decay Hydromaniac, if you want glow, this is lovely. I have it in the lightest shade, which is 10 Fair. And my favorite primer to use with this, the Glossier Future Dew for that extra like oily moment you could say, but they work really, really nicely together I find, so this is gonna stay. And then this is going to be the BB cream. I'm going to be keeping the Misha Perfect Cover BB cream in number 21. It's a Korean beauty um, BB cream and it's just my favorite one that I've ever tried. So that's a forever staple in my makeup collection. Even if it expires, I'll just repurchase it. But I'm going to get rid of the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Hydrating Foundation. Um, this was not long wearing on me. It was very, it transferred really badly. And I kept it around last year because I knew I was going to do a full face of Fenty, but then the skin, uh, the Ease Drop skin tint came out before I did that video. So I purchased that, and then I knew this was going to be on the chopping block for this. So I'm going to get rid of that. And the Anastasia Luminous Foundation is very similar to the Zoeva. Do I want to keep both? Or do I get rid of this? This is a 130N just to cut down on the collection. Because I, I did videos on both of this and also the L'Oreal versus the YSL All Hours. I did videos on those. Yeah, I think I want to keep both because I, these are just, this is exactly what I want in a foundation. So this is gonna stay. Okay, so not a whole lot here. Um, I kind of knew that was gonna happen, but like I said, I do use up some foundations every year. I try out quite a few every single year. So I've got 13 here that I'm getting rid of. I have no clue with how many I started. It's still too many probably for some people, but yeah, I like trying out new things and writing reviews on those and just giving things a whirl and then you find favorites that you just also want to keep around forever. So those are all of the foundations I decluttered. We decluttered my primers, my concealers, my setting sprays, my powders. All of the base products have been decluttered. If you'd like to see me putting things back into drawers and reorganizing my makeup collection, after my declutter, then definitely stay tuned because once all of my declutters are up, that's a video that I'm going to be filming for you as well and I will be posting that too. So that's why that's not included in this video. Um, but yeah, stay tuned and subscribe for more. I, this is only the first out of five declutters. So I hope you, you would like to come back and join me again at some point in time. For now, thank you so very much for watching today's video. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. And I make three new videos a week, so I have also lots of other content coming your way. Take care, everybody. Have a good day. Bye.